Hey everybody, Jason here. I'm glad you're taking a few minutes to watch this serpent review video, but I wanted to do kind of a pre-introduction to the video. The serpent build really didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped that it would. And a lot of times whenever I post videos that aren't absolutely praising something or that are controversial really in any way, I catch hell for it in private messages, uh, RC tech forums, whatever. My goal is never to demonstrate that some product is intentionally deficient or wrong or anything like that. And unfortunately, we're passionate. I get it. I'm passionate. I love to race RC cars. I like having fun. I like building them. And we all need have preferences towards certain brands. Just know that one of the things that frustrated me and one of the reasons I decided to create this YouTube channel is that every time I would read a magazine article in like RC Car Action or some of these other magazines, I never saw a bad review. And every vehicle isn't perfect. If we only shine the light on the best aspects of an RC car, we're really doing a disservice to all the people that are gonna go out and spend their hard earned money. I don't know how long it takes you to earn $300, but for most people, it takes, takes us a while. So I figure I'd like to show you the good side and what I, maybe the not so good side, uh, and let you make the decision for yourself. Uh, I personally bought the Serpent Kit, the Serpent Kit that I'm about to do this review on, and uh, I, I just want to I just want to share that with you. I think it's unfair. I think it's unfair when people come at me and and and, and really give me hell because I've given something a, a review that reflects my experience, and they just they don't agree with it. So I'm not asking you to agree with it. I'm just saying, hey, look, this is my perspective, and it is what it is. So let's watch the video and uh, see what you guys think. Hey everybody, Jason here. Today is part two of the uh, Serpent SRX2 buggy review video. Normally when I do these videos, I try to cram in as much as I possibly can uh, because uh, it just it's nice to be able to sit down and watch one video that kind of covers everything. You don't have to kind of wait for these installments of these different episodes or videos or whatever. Unfortunately, with the, art, with the uh, new Team Associated B5 coming out and the fact that I'm waiting on electronics uh, in the mail, I just don't really have time. I really don't want to pull all the electronics out of other vehicles in order to install electronics in this. So today I'll talk to you a little bit about the, the actual build, the process of the build, what I think of the buggy's design overall, and then we'll, uh, we'll move forward from there. Generally speaking, I think Billy Easton, who's the main designer for this buggy, he did a great job designing this buggy. I mean, the geometry is nice. The plastics are really nice. Uh, Overall, it's just, it's just a really nice, high-quality kit. I mean, there's little details that are really cool. It comes with a shelf for the speed control. Very cool. You don't have to spend 14 bucks here, 14 bucks there. Uh, it actually comes with, believe it or not, I know this sounds a little cheesy, but really nice wheels. The body design is really nice. Um, there are some really cool things that I don't know if they were executed perfectly. Like, for instance, inside the transmission, there are, instead of just putting the, the diff inside the transmission, and it is where it is, there's actually little inserts that have offsets in the hole, uh, offsets for the outdrives, so that you can actually run the diff low, medium, or high. Now, and then there's corresponding inserts for the idler gear so that you can adjust the idler gear. So basically what it does is it takes the top shaft and it, and it kind of pivots the idler gear around the top shaft and then the diff comes up and down, which is really cool, but here's the downside. Does anybody know what that does? I mean, I know for a while the TLR guys were shimming the transmissions to get more bite, but what good are all these adjustments if nobody knows how to take advantage of them? So inside the manual, it doesn't really discuss any of that. So I would, it would be nice if they would, some of these manufacturers would be willing to include some of that setup information for the rest of us, for, you know, for us mere mortal RC car drivers or whatever. Um, so two other things that I think are kind of important. While the kit's nice, I do know that it's had some problems with chassis breakage and stuff like that. And I've heard that they are, they're either updating the chassis or the top plate. I don't believe this kit has either one of those in there. So it would be nice if kind of like X-Ray has done in the past, not Serpent, but X-Ray, it'd be nice if they just said, hey, look, we realize you spent 300 bucks on the kit. It was, I don't want to say defective, but maybe it wasn't the way we had intended it. And so we're going to give you a top plate and a chassis. I doubt that's going to happen, but it would have been nice. Um, the instructions, why they look really nice with all the 3D diagrams and stuff like that, which I'll show you here in a minute, they're really not as clear as you'd think they would be. Uh, if you're going to build this kit, you're going to need a caliper or some type of a, uh, a scale or something like that just to make sure that you're getting the right washers and the right pieces in the right places. Uh, and unfortunately, 
this build really didn't go as smooth as I had hoped it would have. I've heard nothing but good things about Serpent's on, on track performance, but I can tell you that this build is not really a beginner build. Uh, the steering rack actually rubs on the top plate, so that had to be dremeled. The actual diff spring that goes in the diff wouldn't even go in the diff at all. In fact, I'll show you right now. This is the, the male side of the diff, and this is the spring that it comes with, but it, that's it. It won't even go in there. I mean, it's like... So, it basically, I just you have to use the tweezers to get it back out. And I don't know if it's got to be sanded or what, but either way, not a good situation. So, we'll see how this build continues. So far, I think the kit, the engineering behind the kit is like been done really well but I don't know I don't know if I just got a bad kit or like a Monday production run or what but it is uh it is definitely not turning out the way I'd hoped so the diff spring in the outdrive was kind of a pain in the butt but it wasn't the end of the world the thing that really killed me the most on building this buggy were I guess there was two things one the ball cups and the way they the types of ball studs they use they kind of have it's like it's almost you need a nut driver to install them but they really don't locate in the nut driver so that, you can, so that you can line it up. Normally when you put a screw on the head of a hex driver, it's got some, it's rigid. You know, you can kind of put some pressure on it while you thread it into its, its hole. You can't do that with these. So these, you're trying to throw these things in and it's wandering around and you're trying to pinch it and hold it and, and you're trying to hold it, you're trying to locate it, you know, so that it spins properly and then you're trying to put pressure on it. So the, I'll tell you right now, if this buggy ever does see the light of day for me, it will, for sure be I'll for sure be throwing all the ball cups and ball studs in the trash. In fact, I broke two of the ball cups. Uh, not even threading them on. I always use chapstick. I don't know if that's, you know, it's just the way I've always done it. I I take a little bit of chapstick and I and I rub the turnbuckle in chapstick before I thread all of the um, ball cups on. And they all threaded on fine. But what I did was I would take the ball stud and I would actually put the nut end down on the table. I would put the ball cup over it, then I would use a nut driver and just press down on it to snap it in. And it worked good on every single one, but on the last one, for whatever reason, it, two of them broke in a row. So I threaded them all in the same amount of threads. I don't know, I don't know if the plastic's just brittle or whatever, but either way, I, I just ran up to the local hobby shop. I bought some links, some uh, TLR22 links. And so on the back of the buggy, you'll see that it just had, it has Team Losi uh, camber links. So either way, if I keep this buggy, because of its on-track performance, like I said, I've heard that it's been awesome, so I'm really curious to get it on the track and try it out here when I can. But at this point, uh, the build, it's definitely not a beginner kit. I mean, if you're a hardcore racer and you're into going super fast and you want a super dialed car, the Serpent may very well be for you. But there, there's just a couple things I think you should be aware of. One, the ball studs are horrible. The ball cups, horrible. The disc spring won't go in. The steering rack, it rubs. Now. For a newbie, this is probably, these are kind of like a big deal, but for if you're an experienced racer, it doesn't matter. You whip out the Dremel or your X-Acto knife, you shave things down, you trim it, you get it, you make it right. One kicker though, if you have a problem with almost any manufacturer's vehicle, you can jump on the phone, call them and see what's wrong. That's not going to happen with Serpent. I searched Serpent's website, they have like a, form, a contact form. And so, I hate... To, not that it's a bad thing, but Serpent seems to me to be more of like a boutique distributor or a boutique company. It's a very specialized platform. They probably don't have a big customer service department. For the love of God, there's no phone number. And I guess they're based out of the Netherlands or something like that. But, uh, you know, I actually got in touch with, uh, I actually sent Billy Easton, the designer of this buggy, former world champion, great driver, obviously a great designer, uh, a message asking him if he'd be willing to participate or answer some questions and he never got back to me. I don't know why these manufacturers don't want to communicate with the general public or whatever, because I'm sure that they, there, maybe there's some great reason they used the ball studs they did, or maybe there's some great reason they use some super rigid plastic for the ball cups, but uh, it's beyond me. So anyways, the bottom line is this, the car, uh, it's 299 bucks. Everyone I've talked to has mentioned that it is an amazing platform and it has some killer features. The fact that you don't have to buy different caster blocks for caster changes. Another, oh, I have to tell you one thing that really, really impressed me about this kit. When I was putting the rear end together, the hinge pins actually have rounded ends. So that it's got, you know, it's a hinge pin and then it's kind of like back cut and rounded. So 
you know, you're not just basically putting a, you know, a square peg in a round hole or vice versa, whatever. You know how when most cars you just jam the hinge pins in and then you tweak them. This one doesn't work that way. They're actually, they're actually rounded, which is, I mean, it's awesome. It's a cool car. It's got some awesome, it was designed well. Probably just when it got into production or, man, you know, the manufacturer, whoever's manufacturing the car, probably just, they misjudged, you know, the, the coating on the metals and, and some of the plastic, you know, clearances and things like that. So I would imagine that if, this, if they do any, any running changes to this buggy at all, it's going to be maybe one of the best, if not the best rear motor buggy that's out there. So we'll just have to see when the B5 comes out and, and, and have to have a buggy shoot out here pretty soon. So thanks for watching. I know this video probably ran a little bit longer than, than I had intended for it to, but, uh, but I am looking forward to getting some electronics on this thing and getting it out on the track and seeing how it handles. So talk to you soon. And oh, by the way, if we get any updates or if I get any information, I'll amend this video or I'll just do a little like a separate video and link to it on this one. So keep you guys updated. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.